Carter Elliott of Sleepers Media joins the show. We're talking all Michigan State hoops. We're talking Jaden Akins. What Christmas gift do we want to give any player of our choosing? We, we talk about so much Spartan hoops. Let, let's just get to it. Come on now. Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, thank you so much for tuning in to Locked on Spartans here. And before getting to our chat with Carter Elliott about Michigan State basketball, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. It's Bet Online where the game starts. He is a friend of the program. He is part of Sleepers Media, and he is a ball knower because, well, he was a ball player. That's right. You talk about some cred. Carter Elliott's got it. Carter Elliott joins the show now. My man, how are we doing? We doing okay over there? I'm, you know what? Hey, all in all, I'm doing okay. I could be coming at you right now off a loss to Oakland at home, and I'm not. So we're going to look positive. So we're good. We're good. We're not. So, okay, positive vibes right there. And let's do this right here. Every once in a while, I like to be fancy. I like to get a graphic up on the screen. And we're going to get your vibe check of this season so far. We've done this, I think, two other times. For those listening on the pod, we're going to get a vibe check from Carter. Seven is the worst possible vibe possible. He's spiraling if he's a seven. One is final four flights and hotels are booked. And anywhere between that, you can figure it out. So, Carter, on a scale of one to seven, where's the vibe right now with this basketball team and this season? Uh, man, I think I'm going to go four. I'm going to go it's fine. I'm going to okay, go it's, it's fine. fine. And, I, and, and you know what? I kind of hate doing that because it feels like a cop-out. But I, I'm truly fine right now. I truly am <laughs> because I, I took a step back, and I think that I'm not going to fully judge this team until Malik Hall's throwing on the 25 again and is on the floor. I refuse sure. to jump to conclusions until he's on the floor. Now, once he gets back in the rotation and starts playing, I'm either going to move towards one, or I'm going to yep. move <laughs> fast towards seven. Yep. But right now, I'm going to stay strong at four. I love that. Just shoot in the middle, and uh, we are on the same wavelength right there because once he comes back, if uh, the boys start looking good, if they bang out wins against Buffalo, Nebraska, Michigan – yeah, they're all at home. Yeah, they're expected to win those games. <laughs> that ain't going to stop me over here from uh, getting in on the hysteria of boys are back. Boys I'm are telling back. you, I, I got a short Christmas list because I'm not a greedy one. You know, Christmas is coming up. We're all in the spirit. I want That's some true. socks. I want a couple Lululemon, sh- couple Lululemon polos from okay. the wife, possibly. And I want okay. Malik Hall to have a healthy foot. That's literally all I want. I'm a simple man. That's Do it. you know what? I was actually going to end the, the segment on this. You can give a player something for Christmas. What would you give them? You just oh. you just did it right there. You just did it. Oh, he, Will he call oh, he a healthy foot? He can have my foot. I'm not I'm not worried about it. I play in a couple men's leagues. So I'm really not worried about being mobile. He can have my foot if he really wants it. Wow, that's very generous of you. Um, I got to say, the, the gift I was going to hand out was not like a body part. It wasn't as nice as that. Um, the thing I was going to hand out – and this isn't even a guy that like really even played against Oakland. Uh, I just want to like give Carson Cooper a hug, you know, because like, look, it, it's a situation. We all know the situation. He was supposed to redshirt. He's kind of been thrust into this role because, well, you have to field five players on a court, and he's the only other big man besides Kohler when Maddie Sissoko's in foul trouble, yada, yada, yada. But it's a, it's a tough situation for him to be in. And like anytime he like kind of screws up. I, he, he looks like he just accidentally ran over the family dog in the driveway. Like, he just has the worst, like, facial expression. I'm like, oh, bring it in, dude. Come on, man. It's I, no, okay. I, 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 I find myself in those same situations because it, it, it kills me. And this helped me last year with Joey Hauser, actually. I okay. took a step back, and I kind of was like, stop expecting Joey to be, like, some star player and mm-hmm. just kind of appreciate him for the great role player that he is. I think he's taking a step this year, which has been great to see. And it's been great to see, like, Spartan Nation kind of get behind him because last year, if anything bad happened, number 10 was getting was getting a lot of heat. And some sometimes it was warranted, but sometimes it wasn't warranted. Sometimes it was taken a little bit too far. But, you know, you feel bad for a guy like Carson Cooper because he shouldn't be right. out there technically, but he's out there yeah. giving it all for the green and white. So you got to be, you know, give, give the kids some slack. Yeah. No doubt about that. So, yeah, I know. I, like, I could have given it to any of the other eight players that are important or key players to this team. But I I think it was, like, the 15th time I saw it this season of him just, like, going back down the court just like that. Like, oh, 
bring it in, kid. Come on. It, it, it's it's not that bad. You're you're trying your best. Yeah, you you, you break the layup as a seven footer, but it, it could be worse. You know, let's, you not, let's not focus on the negatives. Let's not do that. Tis the season. We're we're in the holiday spirit here. Amen. And you know what? Actually, let's see if we could parlay the holiday spirit and the positive vibes into this right now because I, I've talked lightly about it on the program, and I, I go on BartTorvik.com. You know, I, I when I like to hike my glasses up my nose and feel super analytical, even though I'm not really. They have Michigan State as the 10th team outside of the tournament right now. However, Joe Lenardi, a lot of people already know him, bracketologist, you know, he does all that. On Tuesday, came out with his latest bracket. He has Michigan State on the 8-9 line, which is, like, high up there, but it's squarely in the tournament. So, I guess my question is, like, are, are you worried about the tournament at this point, or are you more on the Joe Lenardi side with being like, yeah, it'll probably – work out they just need to really call back you know yeah so. yeah no honest I, and, and i'm surprised myself with that i'm on that i'm kind of in this camp but i'm, I'm on mm-hmm. joe lenardi's side with this okay. you know i think we had some you know obviously that kentucky win that's going to carry a lot of weight throughout the year do need them to play a little bit better i think they've struggled a bit this year the win doesn't look yeah. as good as it did at the time but yeah. you know calipari i'm i'm giving them faith they're going to get it together villanova adding cam whitmore to the team that win yeah. is only going to get better throughout the year. And look, all the negativity during the summer, all the talk about, you know, Tom Izzo comes in the first press conference and goes, guys, don't be surprised. We start out one and seven and we're a good team. I mean, damn it. Right. Christmas, is, Christmas is upon us and we're eight and four. Like, and we're one and one in the Big Ten. And that Penn State win at Penn State is going to be very good, by the way, too. So I'm, honestly, all in all, we're in a pretty good position. We will be back with Carter Elliott here in a hot second. But first, hey, it's the holiday season. We want everyone out there to be safe, and that includes on the roads. Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, well, you're wrong. Your friends can tell. Your coworkers can tell. Even your parents can tell. Everyone can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving around under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you are not. Because bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is different than, or I'm sorry, is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI paid for by the NHTSA. No doubt. Like, yeah, like that Penn State game could be a quad one win. I mean, that's what we're looking at right now. I mean, I mean, Penn Penn State went into Illinois and beat Illinois like that. They're they're hooping. Beat the the brakes off of them. Like they looked outstanding. It was great. Mm -hmm. And speaking of looking outstanding, I got to say, like we talked about this for recording. I said, I just got a bunch of random topics written down in front of me. We're going to see how we can stitch this together. So I'm going to try to segue as best as I can. So we're going to segue. Hey, they're looking good. Do you know who else is looking good, Carter? Jaden Akins. Jaden Akins career high 15 points against Oakland. And listeners of the show know that like if I say something, I'll jinx it to smithereens, right? And I actually learned earlier this week that this doesn't just happen to the host of the show, but also the listeners of the show that email in because earlier this week, we got a question from a great listener, Craig, and he wrote in, uh, Jason, I'm going to do the short version of the question. I just wanted to ask, and no, why does everyone love Jaden Aiken so much and think that he is going to be, for lack of a better term, an all-time great Spartan? And up until that point, Jaden Aikens this year, he did not have a double-digit game. You know, he didn't, you know, blow up in the box score last year as a freshman. I am the leader of the Jaden Aikens hype train. I think you are my co-conductor as well. So in between the email and this show, just a career-high game from Jaden Aiken. So sorry, Craig, that your question maybe got spoiled, but... I guess, what did you see in the Oakland game that you love the most about Jaden Aiken's game? So I, I think that the main thing, and actually I'll, I'll go back to the last three games because uh, for those who follow DK Spartan Hoops on Twitter, he actually posted the kind of the highlights of the last three games and uh, kind of the, his stats on the game. And I, I commented, I quote tweeted it. I think the main thing that's changed with Jaden is his shot selection. I think he's not taking tough twos and he's being more decisive. So like last night in the game, I thought he did a great job of just, getting getting open in the corner, getting open on the wing, getting open in the corner, being confident, raising up and shooting a three instead of taking, you know, tough long twos or kind of tough shots at the basket. I think he's kind of 
he was able to get himself more into a rhythm. I mean, and sometimes shot selection is it can make all the world of a difference with a basketball player. And that's kind of why I yeah. never wavered when people would ask me questions like, okay, but what has Jay Nakes done this year? Well, to me, one, he was late getting a start because of that, because of the stress fracture injury, which throws off his rhythm and all, you know, everything associated with basketball activity gets thrown off. And then he just, th that rhythm takes a while to get back. And then he was kind of forcing it a little bit, taking tougher shots and, he's not necessarily a tough shot maker. I think he's a really good basketball player and yeah. he's a smart basketball player as well. So I think he mentally is just taking better shots right now, which is just, it, it sends a ripple effect, better shots, better looks, more points. And, you know, you see games like last night where he has a career high 15 points and it, it's great to see. And now it's not just a flash pan type thing. We have a three game sample size that Jay Nakins can be this guy. So you take this guy with, the level of Tyson Walker's playing, combine that with consistency of Joey Hauser, yeah. AJ Hogarth's coming along, add in a healthy Malik Hall into the mix, you got something there. That's a, that's what we call a, a core. And we yeah. can ride with that core. We could also ride down to Houston for the Final Four as well because uh, mm -hmm. yeah, boys will be cooking once. We're jinxing ourselves into them losing uh, against Nebraska at it's home, fine. but we'll deal with that later. That's a future us problem. 100%. Any other like big takeaway from the Oakland game for you? I, it's, it's a weird question to ask because Oakland, uh, like Rocket Watts, has not beat the allegations of becoming a new player. He's the same Rocket Watts that he was when he was here, unfortunately. And I, I, I mean that. He seems like a good kid. I'm rooting for him. But like starts the game running floater, lawn fadeaway two, jacked up three pointer. It's like, oh, he, he's I'm back. Like, hey, there's Rocket. <laughs> so, oh, that's, that's who. We're, there he is. Shoot. Unfortunately, uh -huh. that's. Him. But like with that said, like Oakland as a whole kind of stinks. Then again, it's like our only game in a two week span that we have to talk about. So like any other takeaways they had from that one against Oakland? Uh, to, to, to be honest with you, like I I I hate looking at negatives from wins, but to be honest okay. with you, that that performance and us only winning by thirteen points was a, a disappointment in my eyes. Okay. To be honest with you, I mean, uh, I was doing a little bit of like film watching of Oakland, kind of doing like some pre pre uh pre-game article preview type things gotcha. this oakland defense is one of the worst defenses i have ever watched like in Horrendous. my whole basketball <laughs> life it is the worst if they call it a zone that's disrespectful to whoever calls uh, his own defense right. it's disgusting behavior <laughs> and i was like oh this is gonna be great our big men are gonna get layups we're gonna get open jump shots we should run these guys out of the yeah. gym and we didn't run them out of the gym Okay, we got up by 20, couldn't push it beyond that, hung around the 15 range, and then all of a sudden they wanted to raise my blood pressure with like three minutes left. It got down to 11. I'm like, yep. fellas, what's going on here? Let's get it together. It, it's not good. And, like, honestly, three minutes to go up 11 points against a mid-major, like, no one no one that's healthy should be worried about that. But, like – I. I fear that Portland game did irreversible damage on us because, like, ever since they had that game where they're up 10 with a minute left, they gave them a 9-0 run, and Portland had the ball to win at the end of the game. It's like I'm starting to break out in, in hives watching Oakland claw back 13 point deficit 11 point deficits like i don't yeah and i was and, and, I, and I was just in shock I'm like how's this like how's this how's this happening too like what's going on because yeah. we, we saw we came out in that first half uh came out in the start of the second half and we oh. just got on transition got easy buckets and yeah. it literally took us a minute 30 to get up 20 points and i was yeah. like let me i was like let me get let me get some more of that and let's make this 30 especially because unfortunately in the world of analytics and things like net rankings and things like that, mm -hmm, right. like blowout losses, I'm sorry, blowout wins actually matter. So like we had, a, we had a chance to get some style points too in our favor. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I, at the end of the day, we won. It's, you know, uh, as tapping back into my basketball playing days, that game before Christmas, like Christmas day or like Christmas break is beyond ass to be honest with you it sure. is like it, you you want to you're, you're looking forward to home your family's talking to you about getting home there's no yeah. students uh right i mean obviously i definitely i, I played at albion college so there was not many <laughs> students at the game when we were yeah. in school so during winter break <laughs> i could hear my sweat hitting the floor but like yeah, it's it's also a tough game mentally to kind of kind of get through that's like why I'm not like chicken little going absolutely crazy. I'm not saying that, that you're losing your mind. Believe me, I know what losing your mind feels like. I do it quite often on this program. But like, it was a weird game, right? Like 11 days off, you're playing against a team that you know 
sucks. I mean, all, no, with all due respect yeah. to Oakland, you know, I'm rooting for them the rest of the way, but oh god, that's not the year. And Greg Campy said as much too when we talked to him earlier this week. Like he straight up said, like, not a good year. <laughs> this is not good. Yeah, go like, well, and, and and you know, I love. I'm I'm a Campy fan. Like yeah. just him as a coach. Like I think it's dope. He's been at Oakland so long, and I think like he's had some really good players and teams. This team just straight up is it's it's just not it. It's, it's not it. Isn't. Not yeah. it. And, like, I know that he said, like, he's had some nagging injuries here, you know, nothing big like an ACL. But, like, I, even if they are all healthy, like, okay, yeah. all, all right, I, I guess. But whatever. That is funny, though, that you mentioned the zone because I think Bruce Weber, he was the color guy for uh, the game on Big Ten Network. And he kept talking about Oakland zone. And every time they cut back to the game action, I was like, is he it? Is, is that is that what I'm watching? Is that it, it's like it's like it's like three of the guys would decide to play zone, but two were like running and jumping, and then like I'm just looking, I'm like what? And I, I got to bring this up because I thought it was the funniest thing ever, and it was actually kind of smart. Credit to Greg Campbell for doing it. But when we uh, caught it in the post, uh, specifically Marty Sissoko, they kind of sagged off of him, like in the post, which you really don't necessarily teach, but well, it made yeah. Marty have to kind of go make a move, which he's not used to doing which caused travels and, you know, fading away from the basket for jumpers. So, like, a smart coaching move by him. But, like, I have never seen somebody sag in the post. Like, that that should be an automatic layup, especially if you're, like, 6'10". But, I, I mean, it was – whatever that defense was, there needs to be studies done on it because it wasn't a zone. It needs to be coined as something else. It's every defense you've ever seen at I Am West. You know, like, yeah. you're on your oh, yeah. fourth game in a row. Your cardio's horrendous because you just were at Rick's for the three nights previous. And – you're going back down the court, you tell your buddy, like, I'm doing zone this possession, man. I don't know what the other three guys are going to do, but, like, I, I'm staying here. I'm Top tired. The <laughs> it's zone I, I over me. So. 100%. Um, you know what? This is disrespectful to just talk about Malik Hall being the only guy that could come back. And excuse me for, you know, waiting until minute 15 of this chat to get to this. But, Carter, after the game against Oakland, Tom Izzo says, quote, uh, hey, can't, well, okay, this isn't the quote, but I'm going to read off a tweet. This is from Graham Couch, actually. Izzo says it's not out of the question that Keon Coleman joins the team after Christmas, says that Coleman is recovering from a groin injury suffered at the end of football season. Izzo said he'd welcome him with open arms, thinks Coleman could help the team and, quote, guard people. Is this what the team is missing? Some neon Keon in our lives. What are your thoughts on just about like adding him on the team? Because I, I could talk myself into either way here, honestly. I, uh, to be honest, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna combat any anybody adding bodies at this point to this team. That's where we I'm need, at. We yeah. need bodies, especially because you know, obviously, I love Tom Izzo. He'll always yes. be near and dear to my heart. He's my that's of my course. coach. I'll ride yep. or die for that man. That's that's what it's gonna be until I no longer grace this earth. Yep. And I'm all for sending messages and I'm all for, you know, holding your team accountable. But damn it, we don't have numbers. You can't send messages if you don't have depth. All right. So, no, like, if you, no. If you want to send messages, then bring Keon in so we can put him right. in the game. All right. We, we, we're out here sending messages sitting Pierre Brooks when we barely have enough numbers right now. So I'm just like, damn. Um, the Holloman, Watson, Akins, Whitens, and Kohler lineup for about six minutes in the first half didn't didn't really do it for you. Is that what I'm hearing? Hmm. No, it, it 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 didn't. And you know what? I I never <laughs> ever want to talk bad about any basketball players at any level because I recognize no oh, matter yeah. what, it's hard to be a, a basketball player. If you're a player in the Big Ten and Division One basketball player, there's certain things that no you know people just can't say to you. You have that right to be there. Yeah. But at the same time, as much as, you know, Jason Wines, that's my boy, the team loves him. Sure. It's four on five when he's out there. He's not an offensive threat. He's not necessarily a defensive threat either. So, like, he's, he's just not fine. a threat. Yeah, yeah right. he's not a threat. So, it, it, it kind of – it throws it off a little bit. So, hey, Keon, first of all, he's all, all – he'll add vibes to the team. That's At worst, he'll add some good vibes. <laughs> yes. And the, and the kid's a freak <laughs> athlete. So, I yeah. definitely would throw him out there to guard some people. Why not? And like, I know we're getting really into the weeds here. We're talking about like the ninth, 10th, maybe even 11th guy in the bench right here. But like, I, Keon like would have the confidence to put up a shot, I think. Oh, or as I mean, we, we saw it last year. He scored on the podcaster from oh, Ann yeah. Arbor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know. Why does he, why, why, why does the center down the road talk so much? Like, I, I'm not even like trolling or anything. Like, I'm just generally curious. Like, you, it's not like you're lighting the world on fire or anything. Like the whole, like, oh, you only go to Michigan State if you don't go into Michigan. It's like, I, 
do you have your own problems to worry about like on the court he, like he, if you want to he look if he's like it. and if they're 11 and one like top five team in the country like it would sound sick what he's doing right like he's just being a rat bastard but being able to back it up like this is like hey you also only do a second last dance if you can't cut it at a higher level and that seems to be where we're at and it seems like the level that we're stuck at isn't even going right right now so i don't know january 7th can't come soon. yeah oh it, it can't come fast enough and that's just that's just who he is but it's just like i try to put it into but why like our <laughs> pers- I, I don't i honestly i don't get it it's, i guess it's hard to change people and you know what i don't want to be you know the whole shut up and dribble thing but at the same time like it might no be a good way idea Jawan's listening to those and being like oh yeah hell yeah that's that's right. my center that's that's right. my best player out there podcasting with you know, Jordan Bohannon and Marty Mush. By the way, I love Jordan Bohannon. And I actually love Hunter Dickinson. Okay. I will say that. I like listening to them. I really do. I truly okay. – I, I advocate for players talking shit as well. But gotcha. I literally rather get the world's smallest paintbrush and have to paint Buckingham Palace by hand <laughs> than listen to Marty Mush. That man is awful. Way out. Awful, well, I, awful, awful. So, so beyond out. On that. I, yeah, like, oh, it, it's, it, like I, I don't want to tell people how to live their lives, and honestly, who's even going to listen to me if I try to do that? But, like, it, if you want to have those comments about MSU, like, on January 8th, after you beat us by, like, 10 at home, like, f- go. I, I would hate it. Like, it's it's, it's not going to sound well in our ears, but, like, I, go for it. It sounds a lot cooler right like, now. Like, but, like they're, they're posting those graphics, like, oh, Hunter Dickinson, like, owns real estate in our head. I'm like, we weren't even talking about you. <laughs> you brought us up. We're in United two weeks within playing right. us. Like, it, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's like, it's this, it's like this funny meme that I see here, like on Twitter all the time. They're like, Oh, and there's people out there who said Seth Curry couldn't shoot. Like, no, yes. no one said that. Actually, you just, you just <laughs> tweeted that. So no one actually said that. It's, uh, it's, it's funny, but Oh, the seventh can't come fast enough though. Oh, it's, it's I, on. I was looking at tickets last night, and it's a buck sixty for for upper deck tickets. And I'm like, I think I'm too much of a plebeian for that. <laughs> but am I? I don't know. I, 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 hey, I, I, purchase if, time. If Hunter, if Hunter oh. keeps this up, it's gonna be <laughs> right? sweet. Because it was because I, I was at the game last year, and it was beautiful, oh, beautiful was was watching great. watching them, oh. you know, show out against them. So you know, tear to my eye. I, I'm all for it. It was great, but hey, you know, you don't see them better than facing Michigan. Next game, playing Buffalo sometime next week. I don't know. Like, we got another 10-day break here. Do you like these long breaks in between games, or um, is it just a, a very annoying? Because, uh, like, it, it, the, the Oakland break was fine, but, like, now it's, like, really? we got 10 more days again? So Yeah, it, it's just – it's not consistent. Like, you have the first part of the schedule, and it's, like, game, 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 game. And then yeah, long two break, days. long break, yeah. long break. It's, like, yeah, let's get a little kind of in the middle, like – well, it not, and now when we play that Buffalo game, it'll be like, what, two games in 20 days? Uh, yeah, like 21 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, not not good vibes, but it, nah. it's okay, though. It's all right. Hopefully, well, they, the hopefully are... they, they need to come out and play well, though. They do. Yeah. They got to cover a spread. Like, that, oh. that, that'd be nice. It's just got to start, like, putting that talk into their ears during practice. Like, start bringing, like, Vegas guys I, and that. I bet 15 and a half at halftime, and I was feeling great when it first started. And then, you know. Blake Lampton, Blake Lampman, and Trey Townsend went into my pockets and said, "My family can't have personally a Christmas of all time." So, <laughs> personally, that, that return return that PS Five you brought you bought for your brother <laughs> right yeah, now. Gone. Oh yeah, it's gone. It's going back <laughs> out of your gift receipt. Maybe, maybe that's why I also didn't freak out too much after the game because someone uh, in this conversation took Oakland plus twenty and a half. But uh, who's to say who it was between me or you? Who's to say who it was? Who's to say? <laughs> You gotta hedge your happiness sometimes, uh, and if it's gonna be a close game that I gotta sweat a little, uh, I want to be paid for it. So, and I do so at BetOnline.net. Look at me, family guy or company guy, right there, Carter. Thanks for bringing the vibes, man. This is great. What what a way to just go into the holiday season. I mean, you can't think of a better way. Um, I, hey, I appreciate you. I'm all, you know I'm always down to get on. I always have a good time. I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow then. This is great. I, yeah, I'll even call you on Christmas. This, this is going to be a fantastic time. All right, there we go, man. Well, hey, folks, you guys are the best. Uh, this is going to be our last episode until next Tuesday. Uh, I'm not going to record on Christmas. I'm very sorry. Uh, am, am I soft, Carter, for not doing that? Is that? No, no. Spread think... spread, spread holiday cheer, okay? You, you spread cheer like via that. podcast for the green and white, but it's time to, it's time to spread some holiday cheer outside of the yeah. pod world. 
There we go. Hey, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's the best gift anyone could have given me right there. Reassurance that it's going to be okay that I don't record on Christmas. And I'm sorry, everyone. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back on Tuesday. Uh, we're going to break it down. It's going to be awesome. We have our end-of-the-year extravaganza coming up next week as well. And uh, if any news breaks, you know where to find us. Locked on Spartans. And if you want some more great vibes in your life, check Carter Elliott out. Sleepers Media. Anything else you want to plug? Any, anything else that just you want to say? Get off your chest? Do you have any hot takes? Maybe even not about ah. sports. Any, any Any political thoughts that you just want to get out there really quick? Uh, you know what? Thoughts on props three. How'd that go? Which side oh, did you know? Heaven, it? Heaven the best. Yeah, that's what we're doing on here. Uh, but you know what? I do want. I do want to say this. I'm currently yeah. on a Big Ten road trip. Okay, and for Talk the first time, I went to I went to a game in Nebraska, uh, in Lincoln. Wow. Okay. That place, that arena, is ridiculous. Okay. It's it's, it's like an NBA arena, and honestly, downtown Lincoln slaps. Like okay, they, if they wow. ever get if they ever get good. We're making a road trip down there for a Michigan State football or basketball game. I promise you, it'll be electric. Sure, I, everything yeah. you just said blew my mind right there. I did not. Yeah, you, think you, you literally, you literally go corn, corn, corn city, and like wow. just bar, bars and restaurants. And uh, we also went to Iowa City Carver, Carver Hawkeye Arena. Yeah, it looks like the Death Star. It's okay, amazing. sure. That checks out for Fran to be coaching there then. Like that that suits him all too well. Yeah, even they, they, need, to tear, they, need, they need to tear that place down though, because they just lost his 31 point favorites at home. That's oh my god, that's how much they were favored by? Oh 30, I mean, 30, 30, no, no, it's actually the it's the worst loss like as a favorite in division one basketball history. Oh wow. I that's a fun fact right there. Oh, oh boy. Okay, well uh, go. Go get well. Okay, so Murray's draft stock just got boosted insanely high. He's a top five pick now after that game because he missed that game, right? So that's yep. Wow. Okay, he's worth 31 points apparently to Iowa. Well, look at that. Locked on Spartans, Sleepers Media, and now some locked on Hawkeyes free to end this show. Carter, you're the man. Always love talking. You friend of the program, Carter Elliott. That's right. Uh, hey, go have yourself a, a, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's Eve. Uh, happy everything. Happy everything you guys are celebrating. Love you all. Go Green.